Hello everyone, so thank you for joining me today and in today's video we're going to be looking at the high yield chronic abdominal pain for finals and this is part of the obstetrics and gynaecology edition. So just a little bit about the medicine guide. So the medicine guide aims to support medical students all throughout their journey in medical school. So I've made videos on supporting students to be as successful as they possibly can at medical school. So these videos involve how to be successful in the pre-clinical years, how to be successful during the clinical years, how to get the most out of GP placements, how to get the most out of hospital placements, how to succeed in clinical OSCEs. And I've also made a paediatrics edition with the high yield conditions that crop up in finals such as a vomiting child, congenital heart disease, rashes, limping child, genetic conditions, and a child with a mass. Now this video in conjunction with many others is part of the obstetrics and gynaecology edition, so it includes the high yield topics which crop up in exams. So today's video is looking at chronic abdominal pain. Other similar videos involves high yield gynecolo gynecological cancers, high yield acute abdomen, high yield obstetric emergencies, and high yield STI spinal. So let's get started. So the high yield chronic abdominal pain, which presents in ops and gyne, tends to involve endometriosis, adenomyosis, dysmenorrhea and fibroids and these are the classic um, presentations and topics which crop up again and again in medical school final exams. So without much further ado we'll get started with endometriosis first. So endometriosis is when there is growth of an ectopic endometrial tissue found outside of the uterine cavity. So these endometrial cells will follow the same menstrual cycle as normal cells. Now, there are many risk factors associated with endometriosis, such as a family history of endometriosis, nulliparity, so never being pregnant, early menarche and late menopause. Now, the signs of endometriosis involves a chronic dull pelvic pain, unexplained subfertility, dysmenorrhea, so that's pain before the period has even begun, deep dyspyronia, so that's painful intercourse, and dyschesia is painful bowel movements. In terms of tests, we need to do a pelvic examination, we need to do a pelvic ultrasound scan, and we need to do laparoscopy and biopsy as our diagnostic investigation. So I've highlighted that in yellow and it's in bold because that's very important that you're able to recognise what you would perform as your definitive diagnosis and what you would perform as part of your first line test. So laparoscopy and biopsy is your diagnostic investigation for endometriosis. In terms of management, we can offer NSAIDs and paracetamol for pain relief. We can offer the combined oral contraceptive pill, oral medroxyprogesterone or normal ethysterone. And then finally, the last stage of treatment as such would be to do a hysterectomy and bilateral salpingoophorectomy. Okay. So now we're going to look at adenomyosis. So adenomyosis is where you've got endometrial tissue found within the myometrium, so that's the muscular layer of the uterus. So in terms of risk factors, so if a woman presents with heavy menstrual bleeding or dysmenorrhea, she's more likely to suffer from adenomyosis. And these women will suffer from pelvic pain and heavy menstrual bleeding. In terms of tests, it tends to be a histological diagnosis. So initially you would perform a pelvic examination and then you do a pelvic transvaginal ultrasound scan 
and from that I imagine you could take a biopsy for that histological diagnosis. You could also do an MRI if there is any degree of diagnostic uncertainty. Now in terms of the management we would give transemic acid or methanemic acid initially to alleviate that heavy menstrual bleeding. We can give the combined oral contraceptive pill, high dose progesterone, gonadotrophin release and hormone analog. Other longer term solutions involves uterine artery embolization and total laparoscopic hysterectomy and bilateral salpingo oophorectomy. Okay. But at this stage, you would be looking at women who have completed their family. So if a woman um, with adenomyosis turns around and says, doctor, doctor, I've completed my family. I don't want any children now or in the future. I've had all the children in the world that I need. Then you would consider hysterectomy and bilateral salpingo oophorectomy because that's removal of the uterus and also of the ovaries and fallopian tubes. However, if a woman hasn't completed her family, then do not under any circumstances offer her a hysterectomy or the bilateral salpingo oophorectomy. It's only offered to women who have completed their family. Okay. So dysmenorrhea is next. So there are different types of dysmenorrhea, such as primary or secondary. So primary dysmenorrhea is painful menstrual bleeding without any true pathological cause. Now a secondary dysmenorrhea is painful menstrual bleeding with a pathological cause, such as endometriosis and adenomyosis. So in terms of tests, we need to do a pelvic transvagina ultrasound scan and then do an MRI. So we're performing an MRI in this situation for diagnostic uncertainty. Now in terms of management, the management tends to be a stepwise approach and it's very similar to the management of endometriosis and adenomyosis. So I would advise you to just glance over at the previous slide for that. Now fibroid is when you've got benign smooth muscle tumours of the uterus. So if you have a look at the picture in the top right hand corner, fibroids can present in many ways. It might present as a pedunculated or submucosal fibroid. It could be a subserous fibroid. It could be intramural or it could be a pedunculated submucosal. So women who are from an African Caribbean background or women that suffer from Reed syndrome are at greatest risk of developing fibroids. So these women will suffer from cramping abdominal pain during the menstruation. They experience bloating, subfertility and menorrhagia, so that's more heavier periods. Intense tests, we do full blood count because that presents the iron deficiency anemia due to the menorrhagia from the fibroids. And we need to do a transvaginal or pelvic ultrasound scan to show a firm, enlarged, irregularly shaped, non-tender uterus. And in terms of management, we need to insert the levonorgestrel releasing intrauterine system. We need to use gnadotrophin releasing hormone agnes. Consider myomectomy, a hysteroscopic endometrial ablation and hysterectomy. And again, the hysterectomy is only offered in women who have completed their family. So they are very confident that they won't want any children in the future. And so a hysterectomy will be advised. So I just want to thank you for staying with me today and watching my video. If you like my video, then please give me a thumbs up. Please subscribe to my YouTube channel. Please post in the comment section below. And also please share this video with your friends. I'd just like to take the last few minutes to discuss about cervical smear programs. So one third of young ladies don't attend 
cycle smear program because they feel anxious and are not very confident in their own body. However, a smear test for cervical cancer will only last five minutes, but the implications of cervical cancer can last a lifetime. And I'd just like to encourage as many young ladies that are watching today to please attend their cycle smear appointments and also to encourage um, their own friends and, and family members to attend the cycle smear program. Okay, well, thank you very much for watching my video and I wish you all the best finals.